believe it. There's a picture of them on michaelsavage.com that I dug up. Left side, go down onto the website. It's from a, a weird site, ocasomedia.net. I don't know. I don't even know how I found it. A small army is fighting the Islamic State, standing tall to fight ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Tough soldiers deny ISIS full control of key strategic area, the Assyrian, the Neva plain. These forces defend Christians in Iraq and Syria, created when their wives sold their gold wedding rings and crosses to arm them. And if you look at the pictures of these men, they look like your father or your uncle. And these 12 men started the army. Truthfully, I hope that they're as real as they look. Now they went from 12 to 60. And thank God some of the warplanes that we have were, I don't know how, used to strike ISIS forces advancing on their last holdout. And then their 12-man team worked to extract the Syrian families from the battle zone. Can you? What I'm saying to you is this. Do you realize how lucky we are to still be living in an America where this is not going on since we have such a, a subversive in the White House? I guess that's what I'm trying to say to you. Do you realize how bad this really could be if this subversive had not been controlled thus far? If him and David Axelrod really had their way, that snake... Whenever I see David Axelrod, I want to smash the television set with a, with a sledgehammer. He's the worst of them all. Now he's Mr. Make-Believe, um, Mr. Normal American, a lifetime red diaper doper baby rat who hates this country from the bottom of his toenails to the fungus-ridden nostrils. That's who they are. These progressives are suicidal maniacs. And they could have brought all of us down with them, but they're not through yet. They have another big year left before this is all over. He kicked me and he beat me. A few minutes later, another man came up to me. I was still looking at the floor. I saw that he was a little bit smaller. I begged him. I implored him to take me. I was incredibly scared of the first man who was so big. The man who took me asked me to change religion. I refused. Then he asked for my hand in marriage, so to speak. That night he beat me. He asked me to take my clothes off. He put me in a room with the guards, and then they proceeded to commit their crime until I fainted. She was then raped by 12 men, 12 subhumans, who, as far as I'm concerned, should be captured by special forces and torn apart in pieces on public television for the world to see and to send the message to the other brave vermin around the world who want to join ISIS that when you're captured, we'll tear you apart in a public square and put it on pay-per-view. They took the young girls, 7, 9, and 10, explained the young girl to NBC News in early December. ISIS held her for almost a year before she escaped. The guards held the women and children at a school separate from the men. At night, these same guards raped the women. They said, if they rape you, you're becoming a Muslim. That's why we're allowed to rape you. And he showed me a letter, a letter with the flag of ISIS and a picture of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The terrorist's 11 friends raped her as well. You want me to talk about holiday music? I can't do it. I watched the tape on my website of the girls screaming as they're ripped apart from their mothers and fathers in the schoolyard. And then they took the mothers apart from the fathers and shot the fathers in the field. This is going on in our lifetime while this fraudulent imposter in the White House wages a phony war against ISIS. This goes on while that fraudulent, sour-mouthed creature, that harridan, that that throwback Harridan, Hillary Clinton, the worst of the worst of womanhood, the lowest of womanhood, the lowest who says nothing about rape and kidnapping, instead attacks Donald Trump. This is going on in our lifetime. Slave auctions. Slave auctions, and you're numb to it. We have to do something. We have to do something. And we're going to help the men who are fighting them, because they're the men who are fighting them from their own villages. It started with 12 men, 30, 40, 50, 60 year old men. They'd rather stay home in bed and play with a dog. Oh, I guarantee they'd rather go holiday shopping today. Yeah, they'd rather be on a Southwest airliner flying somewhere in a beautiful America created by the founding fathers because they knew that an imposter like Obama was liable to come along one day who would try to subvert the Constitution and steal all of our liberties if he could. They knew that one day a gang, a criminal gang, would appear in this country and try to steal everything for themselves. That means all the power. And they set up checks and balances to stop 
this future criminal gang from doing so. And thus far, they've kept this gang of jackals at bay to a certain extent. These jackals have only stolen the treasury. That's all they've done. They've raped it and pillaged the treasury the way ISIS rapes and pillages the Yazidi women. These corrupt, greedy Democrats from, from, from Feinstein, Boxer, Pelosi going east. There's no limit to how much money. Nah, there's no limit to how much money they want to control. No limit to it. Remember the sporting goods store in The Sopranos. And then think of your country. I want to go back to the fact that it's December. Most people's minds are not on politics. Our minds are on family, travel, friends, as they should be. And we really have to thank God that we have such a great country that can even survive Barack Obama. We have to have thanks to God that the creators of this nation, you call them the founding fathers if you wish, was so brilliant that they could anticipate a man as evil and as anti-American as him and prevent a further meltdown that has already occurred. And we the people are stuck in the middle of it all whether it be the terror event by the two Muslims, what was it, two weeks ago in San Bernardino, the Boston Marathon bombing. Wherever we turn, we see radical Islam and its fangs here in America because of Barack Obama. I also blame the, the generals, the cowardly generals, who no matter how brave they have been on the battlefield, are cowards on the political field. All of these generals who know what he is, who know what he's doing and know what his allegiances are, have nothing to say while they're working for him. And the minute they retire, suddenly they're brave and bold. And they step out like a talk radio host, and they tell us about 80% of what they really know. If they ever told you what they really knew, you wouldn't be able to accept it. If one of these generals ever came out and they saw, said, we saw him on a prayer rug, you wouldn't believe it. No, it wouldn't matter. After all, Islam is not the problem. Ask Hillary Clinton. Wouldn't matter if he isn't a Muslim. Would it matter if Brennan is a Muslim or anyone else in the, in the uh, executive office is a Muslim? Why would that matter? So what's going to happen in this final year? Bush watched the economy fall off a cliff in his final year because he drove it off a cliff. He didn't watch it fall off a cliff. He engineered it off a cliff. The bumbler watched it fall off a cliff. No, he didn't watch it fall off a cliff. I warned you in, a, in August or September of his last year, Bush that is, Watch what he does in the last six months. I warned you, I called him a fiscal socialist. That's right. I, Mr. Right-Winger, called Bush a fiscal socialist. Who was right, me or you? Ronald Reagan, the great one. The man greater than everyone on earth was ensnared in the Iran-Contra scandal. That ruined his, uh, his final year. Bill Clinton impeached in his final year. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke in his final year. What's going to be Obama's final year? This man is such a maniac, he is such an egomaniac, and has never been subjected to any criticism ever in his life. Never has this man ever faced any criticism, ever. He's gotten away with everything his entire life. He has skated over everyone. So what might he do? A man who cannot be reined in by reality, a man who insists that he is winning the war against ISIS, when ISIS is spreading its tentacles around the world, a man who insists that he knows what he's doing, even though he has sabotaged the economy for years to come. He's going on and on saying, I've never been more optimistic about a year ahead than I am right now, before dashing off to his 70 millionth vacation. Another vacation with the family. He's worked so hard, and he's spent $70 million since he's been in office on family vacations. So what might he do in his uh, last year of uh, absolute power? But I want to go back to my main point. We really are thankful, we should be thankful rather, than the, that the Founding Fathers were so bright that they could even envision a monster like him appearing and stealing the presidency and wrecking everything he could put his hands on because he has such an antipathy for the nation. And we've survived it so far, more or less, haven't we? What could it be if it was any worse? I'll be right back. Savage. There is a legitimate criticism uh, of what I've been doing and our administration's been doing in the sense that we uh, haven't, you know, on a regular basis, I think, described 
all the work that we've been doing uh, for more than a year now to defeat ISIL. Did you hear that double talk? In other words, he hasn't used enough propaganda. He hasn't gotten the stooges from NOR to disseminate his lying message. You know, if there ever is a time that we regain this country and regain this government, and there is a people's tribunal, people in the media should be called before this tribunal for having conducted this crime against the truth, crime against humanity. For while the rapes and the murders and the kidnappings go on, we're doing nothing about it except, I guess, feeding the other side. And he says he has the best strategy to defeat ISIS. Why do you think he's giving such a speech before going off on another expensive vacation? Because he knows he's in trouble. He knows that all thinking people can look right through him. And it doesn't matter what their race is. It doesn't matter what their sexual orientation is. People are people. And most people are smart enough to look right through this man. And they know he's a danger to their survival. They feel it. They can sense it. They can attack the Republican candidates all they want. But there's one reason and one reason alone that Trump is thriving. The word is Muslim. That's the word. The M word. No matter what they say about him, he's the only one willing to take this head on. And I want to bring up this issue of Muslims again. In a time of war, when it is Muslims who are committing virtually all the acts of terror in this country, why would you bring in millions of unvetted Muslims, mainly of military age, not women and children from Syria. When we know that they've stolen passports, they've boasted they're going to infiltrate Europe and America. What sane president would permit this to go on other than an insane president to somewhere for the other side? But I made the point over and over again. But it gets even better. I'm sorry. It gets better. The madness continues. The megalomania, the psychopathic behavior is evidenced over and over again. I try to warn you and stop the coming civil war, which I will mention again. Not because it's going to put 10 cents in my pocket, but because it's going to put two cents worth of sense in someone's brain. He knows he has failed us. He knows that most thinking people uh, distrust him to their core. Every survival instinct in every man with a brain that I know of thinks he is actually working for the enemy. I mean intelligent people, businessmen, retired businessmen, military, retired military, police, retired police, every one of them who has a brain and a survival aptitude, knows that this man is a threat to their existential existence. We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. The book is on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. All of the royalties that I make on that book, and I'll repeat it again, write it down. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund for deserving college students going forward. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. Savage.